My name is Mark Antonio. I'm a college counselor here at Hilton Schools. Can everybody hear it back there? I'm hearing from our television people up there. All right, like I said, my name is Mark Casonio. I'm a college counselor here, and uh, this is Lisa Partridge. She's our director of college counseling, and Ellen Boucher is our assistant director of college counseling. Uh, first of all, I want to say thank you to all the parents who come out. Uh, it's, it's great having you on campus, and the, the thing that I've really enjoyed seeing is so many of our students being nice folks to our parents. I've noticed at times, sometimes with high school students, the parents show up on campus and then the kids kind of run from them like, you know, and it's really nice to see so many of you being good hosts. I also appreciate the students this morning. One of my jobs is to go through the dorms and uh, make sure students are awake and moving and um, you know, there really wasn't much work to do today. So we're really looking forward to working with this group of uh, parents and students in college counseling. This is our big kickoff event. Uh, we appreciate uh, your attendance and attention. We by by the end of today, you know, you'll 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 feel like you've heard a lot and done a lot, and uh, you know, we we hope that you're able to uh, you know retain. You have a good sense of kind of how we do things here at Tilton School, uh, but in another way, you'll be a little bit tired of hearing this. We're we're going to throw a lot of information at you, and that starts this uh, morning. Uh, Ms. Partridge and Ms. Boucher are going to um, are going to do their set. There's going to be an overview of the program or kind of what we do here at Tilton School from 8:30 to 9:30, followed by two breakout <coughs> sessions. One's from 9:45 to 10:30, and the other one's from 10:40 to 11:25. So at about 11:30, uh, we'll, we'll be done today. Uh, there'll be a break in between. What we're doing in here is a large group before we do the two breakout sessions. Um, but, uh, you know, it's, it's a lot, so uh, just, just hang with us. You know, all students are expected to attend both breakout sessions. You all, you all received a book. I'm probably going to be something that you all know, but on your book, there's a sticker up here. And on that sticker, there's a couple of, there's some information about the two sessions that you, that you chose to attend but that you were signed up to attend if you did not choose yourself. And then on the second page of the book, there's the information about where each of those sessions take place. Some basic questions that people ask are, you know, if I'm a parent, do I have to go to my student, with my student to those sessions? The answer is no. Sometimes parents and students will break up and go to different sessions. So you, you're not always going together. Uh, there is one mandatory session for international students uh, because there's some particular things that uh, is, is important information that is pertinent just for international students and stuff that we like to cover. Um, in the first breakout session, if you're an international student, we are expecting you in the lecture hall uh, for that session. Um, and then, like I said, we'll, we'll close up at 11.30. At 11.30, um, uh, you will be free to go, and uh, for, for our students, we will begin our, our group work, our small group work, not next week, but the week after, uh, the next full week of classes, and uh, we'll meet in the lecture hall, we're going to get going uh, with the stuff that, that, that we talked about today. Um, but that's sort, of, that's sort of an overview of kind of how things will work. Um, but we got to get moving here. We've got a tight schedule, and we'll get going with uh, who's going first here. Ellen Boucher. Thank you. Good morning. Welcome. Um, I'm going to start by talking to you about a service we subscribe to called Naviance. It's widely used by high schools around the world to uh, college research and, um, to track applications. So, next slide, okay. Um, the part that students and parents work with is called family connection. Um, it's specific to our school, so each school that uses Javiance has family connection that just that school uses. Um, 
if you have used Family Connection at other schools, not at other schools, you have to have a separate account here. Okay? So next slide. Basically, there's two different components to Naviance. One is for um, college research, and the other is the way that we track uh, college applications. So students who've been at Tilton for grades 9 and 10, you've had exposure to the career planning portion of Naviance. Um, you might remember you did some interest inventories with us. Okay. Um, it's not too late for students who are just learning about Naviance. We encourage you to go in and use some of those tools that, that are used for um, career planning and especially for students who might be wondering about majors. It's an awesome resource. So, in your booklets that you received, parents, you um, have a registration code that gives you access to Family Connection. Um, it gives you the website, very uh, in intuitive and very easy to use. Next slide, please. This is what you'll first come to when you log in. Um, it's really important on that previous page with the, with the website, the slash Tilton School, because that's how you get, you get to the part of the website that's specific to us. Um, you're just going to enter the email and password that you want to use for this account and press log in. Next screen. And you'll come to this. And this is where you enter the code that's in your book. If you have any issues when you create your Naviance account, feel free to call the College Counseling Office or Mrs. Jones, our <coughs> registrar. She's like a pro at Naviance. But it's, it's very intuitive and quite simple to use. So you'll just go through all of these um, pages where they ask for information and fill them in. Accept um, your entrance into the program and you'll be all set to go. So there's basically three tabs um, in Naviance. <coughs> Colleges, Careers, and About Me. So students that have been here in grades 9 and 10, <coughs> you have done some work in the About Me tab. That's where like, there's an um, interest inventory called Do What You Are. You, you would have completed that with us. Um, it's important to know that any information that you enter into Family Connection is just for your use and our use. Colleges and universities won't see anything that you, any research that you do, any of the strengths inventories that you take. So please use this tool. It's, it's kind of fun to, to start exploring. Um, the When you take the interest inventories, they will connect to majors that, that the interest inventories point out as being um, something that your, the questions that you answer that might be a good thing for you to research. They'll show um, which colleges and universities offer those majors. And then if you major in a, if you choose a certain major, it shows careers that are associated with the majors. It's just a really fun tool to start doing some exploration. So then another um, tab besides careers is colleges. Great research tool. Um, so the college I chose to, as an example is Ithaca. And you can just see already, um, so it, it doesn't quite show, but it'll show you the average net price, graduation rate, acceptance rate. Um, you'll find deadlines. If you click on the admissions section, it shows you the deadlines for applications. It's just a wealth of information about colleges, one-stop shopping. Okay? Um, please go in and play around. And again, when you do the interest inventories, whatever your results are, will connect you to certain colleges that you might want to take a peek at. Um, next screen. And here's another page having to do with it. So another, uh, another interesting tool that's asso associated with Naviance is we load in information from the past three graduating classes from Tilton School. So for example, you can see over the course of the last three years, 2015, we had three applicants, they all were accepted. Um, last year, six applicants, they all were accepted. And then this year, uh, 2017, two applicants, and of course they haven't heard yet whether they've been accepted. 
So it just kind of gives you a gauge for how Tilton School students have done at certain schools. Um, acceptance rate, application fee, um, there's a wealth of information. You can see all the different tabs you can hit to find out information about a school. Next slide. So this is a really fun tool. We call them scattergrams. Some people call them graphs. Um, so that information from the past three graduating classes is plotted on a graph. So the green squares represent Tilton students who have been accepted to Ithaca. One, the little uh, red triangle would have been students who were waitlisted. And then an X means that student did, didn't get in. So the student who um, this was a sample page for is represented by the blue dot, the blue head, the blue head. So that person had a 4.0 and the SAT scores are down at the bottom. They didn't quite fit on the screen in a 1400 um, SAT. And again, that's just two pieces of information. You know, there's a lot more to an application. This is just a gauge, but it's kind of a fun gauge to see where, a, where new students you compare to previous Tilton students who apply to the school. So um, that particular person is in really great shape when it comes to Ithaca, because they're way outside of the students who've been accepted. The person who wasn't accepted, you can see, um, you know, 2.7 2 and, and SAT scores not quite as strong. Okay? So it's just a fun tool. Once you, um, oops. Once you um, have your accounts, in students will be taking the SAT in May and the ACT in April, and we'll enter the test um, score results into Naviance along with the predicted GPA. So you'll be able to look at um, where you fall on these graphs come about June. You'll have a good idea of where you fall on these graphs, because you'll have some information entered into Naviance. So, uh, the next slide after this one. Better? Yep. So, this is a tool that counselors, parents, and students will use a lot starting beginning of senior year. So, it's basically the student's working college list. Um, so, students, parents, and counselors can enter colleges and universities into a student's list. So, you can see here, RPI was entered by the student, and the counselor entered, entered Union and Wentworth Institute of Technology. Parents, as you find colleges that you'd like your student to check out, you'll, you'll be able, through your account, to enter schools onto the list. So this becomes our working list. So if, if you're at home and your student is here next fall, and you, you're wondering like where your child's list stands, you can log into Naviance, and we keep that current. So during our weekly meetings with students, I always pull up their Naviance list, have them take a peek at it and say, is, does this, is this current? Are you still take, uh, thinking about these schools? Are there any you want to add or delete? Um, it's just a working, working document. And then once they get to the point where they're going to apply to schools, Mrs. Jones, our registrar, she is able to take the schools and move them to what we call the active list, colleges I'm applying to, and we send all of the students' documents to colleges and universities through Naviance. It's a great tool. It's, it keeps everyone organized, and it's a way for all parties to be able to see where a student stands. So we encourage you just to get in there. Um, can we do next one, please? Um, <coughs> have fun with this. You can't do anything wrong. Just play around. Um, no one sees this information except you and counselors um, and start investigating. So it's a really great tool and um, we encourage all parties to use it. Students, as soon as college counseling starts on January 23rd, you're going to be using it regularly so you'll become super familiar with it. Um, in all, you know, outside of college counseling, we encourage you to go back in and look at um, the About Me tab. Uh, start doing some more surveys, see if maybe things have changed for you as you've matured. Um, but please take advantage of this resource. Okay? And again, if you have any issues, 
give us a call. Parents will be trying to register. <coughs> so I'm going to shift gears now. And talk about um, building the college list. Yeah. 
You need to make sure that's okay with your parents. These are all discussions that you have to be having. Cost, of course, is huge. Um, financial aid, you saw earlier in Naviance, you can kind of get a gauge of like the average financial aid package. All of these things you need to be thinking about as we develop your list. So, next slide. Parents, we do ask that um, as you start looking at schools with your students, that you let them express their opinion on a school before you do. Um, try to ask open-ended questions after a visit. So what did you think about that school? Tell me what you liked. Tell me what you didn't like. If, even if you hated the school, try to keep your opinion to yourself until your student can talk about what they thought about a school. Um, students, as you do visits, we encourage you to come up with some sort of way to keep track of your impressions of the schools. Um, whether it's a journal, you know, every time when you get back in the car to journal uh, what your thoughts were, favorite things, things you didn't like. Uh, maybe professors that you met, you could write down their names. Tour guides, you could write down their names. Um, but just make some notes because as you start to visit a bunch of colleges, things might start to, you know, cloud up a little bit. Um, you also might want to take some photos, maybe create you know, folders for each school that you visit, that sort of thing, but just be organized about it and write down your reaction somewhere so that you can look back later in your um, search to see, to see what you thought about a school. So in this process, next slide, it's really important to remain open-minded. Um, you're going to find that neighbors and family friends have a lot of opinions about schools. Keep your mind open and form your own judgments about schools. You also need to be realistic. Um, you know, maybe you have a dream school as we start to take standardized tests, look at your rigor of courses in your GPA, that certain schools may not be on your list, and we need to be realistic about that. Um, you have to, to be able to talk about what your strengths and weaknesses are. That will also help you determine what type of school you need to go to. Patience and calm from both parents and students. You guys need to be nice to each other through this process. Um, and just the real, you need to be willing to put in time starting now. We always have a small handful of students when we come back in September that really didn't do much over the summer, and we don't want that to happen to you because your senior year will be so much more enjoyable if you put in some, some work and some research starting now and into the summer. So, the list itself, next slide, so this is what's going to happen. You, um, students, you have filled out two questionnaires for us. Parents, hopefully you've returned your questionnaire. If you haven't, we encourage you to do so as soon as you can. If you need another one, just let us know and we can send you a link. Um, we're going to look at feedback from students, feedback from parents, we're going to estimate a GPA using your academic courses. Um, we're going to look at PSAT scores because we won't have ACT or SAT scores yet. For those students who have them, um, we'll use them. Um, and we're going to come up with a list of initial college possibilities for you. Students always look forward to getting the list. It's fun. Um, we divide it into three sections, A, B, and C. A, generally reaches, uh, B, target schools where we feel good about your likelihood of getting in, but it's not a sure thing, and then C list are likely schools. You know, we, we want everyone come April of 2018 to have colleges that they've been accepted to no matter what. Um, so we, about mid-March, we will send that initial list of college possibilities to students and parents. And we encourage you right away to start doing some visits. Um, and that becomes your working list. We don't put that initial list into Naviance because students and parents, we want you to go through the list. And colleges and universities that you like, we want you to enter into Naviance. So that gives us feedback as counselors um, as to the schools that we gave you, the ones that you like. And then we can offer more suggestions by looking at the schools that are appealing to you. 
And it's okay, it's rare that this happens, but it's okay from that initial list if you don't like any of the schools that we, that we gave to you. Just be honest, and the important piece of that is that you give us feedback as to why you didn't like the schools. So we're gonna ask you, what did you like? What did, what did you not like? Um, what are you finding that you want in schools? Okay, so it's a really fun um, list to receive and we encourage you to start giving us feedback on it straight away. And students, when you get your list and you like schools that we put on that, you're going to enter them into Naviance. And we'll be teaching you how to do that um, through college counseling. Next slide. So I have referred to GPA. We do um, calculate the GPA for students based on academic courses only, but it's only for in-house use. On our school profile, um, it says that we do not report GPAs to colleges and universities. We just don't report. And the reason for that is, across the nation and across the world, GPAs are calculated so differently across the boards that Colleges and universities most of the time calculate their own GPA anyway. But we, we do the in-house GPA just as a gauge, just so when we're forming that list, it can be somewhat on target. Um, also, you all students are about to embark on your test prep. Um, we want you to take that seriously, and we want to give both we want you to give both the ACT and SAT the best shot possible. If, however, you're a horrible test taker and you feel disappointed in the scores that you get, do know that there are a large number of schools that are test optional, meaning that you don't have to submit test scores. Um, you can find that list at fairtest.org. So again, give it your best shot, but if we find that your standardized test scores just aren't up there, we can at least have some of those schools on your list when we start applying next year. So I know there is several athletes in the crowd. Um, you're going to have to be registering for the NCAA most likely. Um, we hope that you will attend Mr. Ruggles presentation uh, later today where you will get more information about that process. First thing, expect complications. Expect the unexpected. But again, that's why we're here. If there are complications, we'll help you work through them. Number two, become a mentor as much as a parent. So in other words, guide your student, but don't drive the car. Let the student be the driver, you can be their guide. Keep your anxieties at bay, number three. If you do feel yourself getting anxious, try not to express those anxieties to your child. Use your spouse, a family member, or a friend to sort of say, oh my gosh, I'm feeling freaked out about this. Number four, um, talk about hopes and goals, not just colleges. So don't make it specifically about schools, but talk about you know, the future and what, and what you hope for, for your, your hopes for your child. Number five, present a unified front. Whether married or divorced, um, parents need to be on the same page as far as finances. Um, and that's something students too that you need to be talking about with your parents is in terms of money, like you know, what are they going to be contributing? Um, you know, you need to be realistic about that. Um, and also, parents, if, you know, for the unified front, if you have, if you do have um, expectations about geography, or you know, if you know you don't want your student to be in an urban setting or something like that, that's you need to agree on those types of things. Number six. Listen to your school counselor, not your neighbors. <laughs> on that one. Number seven, expect your student to accept others' advice he or she wouldn't accept from you. They're teenagers. Number eight, educate yourself about the process. You guys are here, you're doing that. Number nine, I love this one, high school still matters. So, Students, still enjoy your time in high school. Have fun, enjoy your, your extracurriculars. Um, 
Again, start doing your work now for the college process, and senior year will be much less stressful, and the college application part will just be a small piece. Um, and number 10 for parents and students, I think you'll like this one, don't nag. Um, something that we're just about to talk about, we're here to help students and parents set up a timeline. Okay, so then you don't have to nag. They're going to have weekly meetings with their college counselor where we ensure that they're on track. Okay, that's, that's why we're here. We're here to help students and parents this process be as smooth and easy as possible. So on that note, I'm going to turn it over to Lisa. She's going to talk to you about the timeline and when things are going to be happening in our office. Thank you. Grade, 10th grade, 
and what's happened so far in 11th grade, you're just going to have on there um, the names of the courses. So that will be followed up by a year-end grade. We only report out year-end grades. And when we put together the grade point average, we're going to transfer that SES as a 4.0. We're going to go to a 4.0 system um, just so that we can better relate to the colleges and what they're determining is their averages. Any questions about that? One area that I would um, encourage you to do is to really take a close look this weekend at those grades and the course names and titles. A number of you have joined Silton School from another school system and we want to just make sure that we have transferred the courses and the grades correctly. So if you find any kind of discrepancy, um, please let us know and Mrs. Jones, our registrar, will take care of that. Right, so this is your chance to make sure that everything is correct on that transfer. You also have a policy sheet, um, a really short policy sheet that's in the pink section of your resource book that I'm going to refer to. Um, it's information about withdrawal, a little bit of information about that. Um, and for information about applying to institutions of higher ed as members of the Principles of Good Practice, and I already referred to that. Um, so there's a little bit of information that you need to be comfortable with, and please refer to those policies. And then one area that I want to bring your attention to is standardized testing. We do not report to colleges any standardized tests. So that means that mostly because the colleges themselves want those records to be official and they need to be sent from the issuing boards like the college board or the ACT. But also because so many schools are SAT optional and a number of our students will take advantage of that and not want to report their scores, so we don't want them on that transfer. Okay. So it would be totally up to the students to release their scores to the institutions that they apply to. It's not something we do in our office. We will help students, we'll show students and parents how you do that, but it's totally up to the student and the parent. So we're going to go to the timeline, and we're going to start with the end in mind, right? We're at UBD School, understanding by design. We start with the end in mind. Yeah, uh, last night we talked about this whole process ending up in the college applications in less than a year from now. Well, actually, we would like to have this process kind of come to closure at that Thanksgiving break in November. That's our goal. Right? So we don't want to be the last ones sending in applications. We want those applications in in November so that when the students return from their short break, um, and a little bit after that, they can be corresponding with colleges and know that all the documents have been received and that they're getting confirmation that, yes, everything's in order. Of course, that changes up a little bit if you're going to be an early action or early decision student. Those two plans that were discussed last evening. So that requires students to come to campus and let us know on opening day that, yes, they're going to be doing an early decision or an early action. And then we have to have all their documents and their requests in no later than October 15th. One, because we have to have time for faculty to be able to write those recommendation letters, right? So they need time to be able to get those together and write a thorough, good recommendation. Um, and two, because we need that last chance to approve those essays, do those final edits, and make sure everything's in order. So that's kind of a, a time frame to put on. But to go back, um, some things that have already happened. We've already met with students uh, and opened up College Board and actstudent.org accounts. Because students will be taking the ACT in April and they'll also take the SAT in May. And some will say, but I'm only preparing for the SAT, I don't want to take the ACT. Well, preparation for SAT will also help prepare you for the ACT. And you're just not sure at this point which test is going to benefit you the most. We find students really surprised about their performance on the ACT test and the format of that test. Um, so we want you to take one of each, and then we can see how you're going to proceed in the fall. Okay? So we've opened up those College Board and ACT accounts. 
Um, if you're interested, parents, in seeing what, what's going on in that account, your student can share their login and password with you, because they have them. Uh, and then we also spent Wednesday morning together uh, hooking up the PSAT scores that you have in the resource book with the Khan Academy, which is a free resource um, for preparation for the SAT. So Sal Khan has done a wonderful thing, connecting with the College Board, and they take the PSAT scores and they create an individualized plan, depending on what the students scored and what they're working with and their answers on those tests. And they plan out a whole SAT prep that takes the student to the test that they identify they're taking. So we put in there that the students are going to be taking a May 6 SAT. And so the plan is there for how much a student needs to spend um, in getting ready for that test. We'll meet with your students, the ones, uh, the students who are taking the Khan Academy, and it is all self-paced, it's individualized. We will check in with them once a week just to make sure things are going along okay and that they're actually making some progress. But it is self-paced, so you might want to ask every once in a while how they're doing. We kind of estimate about five hours a week in SAT prep from now until May to get ready. Okay, so it's easy to put that on the back burner. So any encouragement uh, to kind of get some of those things that a break, a long weekend, that maybe there's some extra time spent in catching up on the Khan Academy would be great. So those are some of the things we've already done uh, with students. And then in February, um, and actually the end of January, that last week, and Mr. O'Neill referenced the January 23 week, that's when we will begin the one on the group sessions for college counseling in the lecture hall. Um, weekly college counseling sessions begin fully also through February and March. Students will submit their preliminary interest list of colleges based on college counseling homework assignment. I've had a number of families call and say, can we get that college list early? It's really difficult to do because the students haven't had a chance to do this research. So we need to spend some time in the college counseling sessions, um, just to having them become familiar with some of the research tools that are out there that we use, Naviance and a couple of other pieces that we use as well, uh, and have them give us some guidance on what they're thinking. Things change as they kind of move around, you start thinking about it, the self-reflection piece. Uh, they add in a little bit more information, and then we'll have those college lists out in March. So we also ask um, in March, and usually it has to be before April 1, to think about the summer plans. And you might be thinking now, this is way too early to be thinking about how summer is going to work. But it doesn't have to be a souped up kind of program at a university or college in the U.S., but it might be. It could be that summer job. This is usually where parents applaud, like great, a summer job is a good thing. Colleges really give great credit to students who can show that responsibility, that work 20, 30, maybe 40 hours a week at a summer job and have done that consistently every summer. Um, there are some students who can't, they need to take care of siblings at home um, during the summer, they're actually helping out. That also is something that we can record. But how are you going to spend your summer? You need to think about that. How are camps going to fit in? Some of you are going to go to showcases. Um, and how do you um, show that you're not just one dimensional, that you're not maybe just an athlete or just an art student or we can help you look at how that time is spent and how to enhance your college applications. So you need to be thinking about those kinds of things and we can have family and counselor conversations about those. So we would also, um, our plan is to get those college lists out um, that first week in March so that you have some time to go out and make some of the visits. If you want to go out in February, because we really do have that long weekend, uh, I think students are free at the End of Wednesday, the last commitment, we have all of Thursday, all of Friday, all of Saturday free. Um, and they don't have to be back until Sunday night. So you might want to just go to one of your local colleges. Maybe pick a state university and maybe a small liberal arts college just to get the feel of what it's like to be on their campuses. Go for the campus tour in the information session. 
You always want to make sure that the college knows you're visiting. Right? So not just going off and visiting with a friend who goes to that school and gives you their own tour, but you want to be on record. This is, there's a piece called Demonstrated Interest, where the colleges actually check off every time you come to campus or, or every time you make some kind of communication with them, including looking at their website and registering for information. So last night you heard reference of that colleges are trying to figure out if you're really that interested in them. It's very easy to apply to colleges through the Common App. You can easily send off a Common application. But are you interested in them? They're trying to gauge that. And so they record this demonstrated interest. And that can help you in your review process if they know that you're truly serious about them. You don't want to be that stealth application that just kind of shows up out of the blue. They've never heard of you before the application comes in. Because they wonder, oh, did this kid just send off one more? Because it's easy to do. So we encourage you to make sure the admission office knows that you're there on that campus. <coughs> so we're wrapping things up um, early in May. <coughs> one, because we become the AP um, coordinators and tutors and, no, not tutors. Um, actually, the test coordinators. So the office closes. We finish up everything by the end of April, the first week in May. Um, and by that point, you have, students, a wonderfully written first draft essay. That first pass at the Common App essay has to be in place. Because you won't just write one essay. You heard last night, you'll probably, at, at a minimum, be writing three or four. Some colleges have four essays required just for that one institution. So you want to be in a good place with that major one, right? That 650-word essay. We bring colleges in in April to talk about the essay. They'll review your writing if that's what you would like them to do. They'll give you feedback. We have worked with you. We'll show you Tilton School student essays, students, um, uh, graduates who have actually identified that we can use their essays and you can look at them. So you can see what our kids have written in the past, what kinds of things they talk about. We'll also um, do some mock interviewing. So we'll have a whole group of colleges and universities come in and give you a chance to have a practice interview before you go off for those March break campus interviews. Okay. There are some schools that just don't provide interviews. The big state universities usually don't. They just don't have time for that. But if it is one of the smaller colleges, you need to take advantage of the interview. So we want you to have practice. We want you to be comfortable talking to people you don't know. You can practice with us, your college counselors. Um, but it's better to go through the process at least one time with someone that you don't know. Because that's what's going to happen when you step on the campus. So we have you come in, and it's totally optional. But you heard last night, what was that thing about optional and suggested? It's really not optional. Um, if you want to be prepared, you need to take advantage of it. Okay. So we pretty much would like to have some kind of finalization on the plans for summer and what you're going to be doing. Those are the last visits. <coughs> it's very difficult to leave Tilton School during the academic year. You have two excused absences each semester, two, in order to visit colleges. So you know we're in a six day um, a week atmosphere here with classes, so it's really difficult to get away. And you don't want to wait until the Thanksgiving break, one because of usually the college campuses are only open on Monday and Tuesday of that break, and they're already starting to read your files, it's just a little too late for any kind of visiting. So you should be making those plans for the last visits in the summer. If you need to go back and hit one or two as a redo, because you want to see what it's like in the full life of the school and what's happening with students on campus, then you can go back and take those two days. So you get two days this semester coming up. And we think with the March break and the long weekend, the February one, and also the April long weekend, that's often the time for visiting colleges. And then you get the next two in the next semester, senior year. 
So summer 2017, you keep investigating, reading, talking to current students, you're kind of finalizing that list, and you're deciding about the early decision and the early action. One good thing is that Hilton School does not fully close during the summer, and we are here. So we're available for you to come by if you want to make an appointment, if you'd like to have a meeting. All of the college counselors are available. Um, we do take vacation, but as long as if you set something up in advance, then we're going to try to be here, or we'll let you know which weeks that we're not available. Um, but we do continue our conversations. We help finalize things. And then some people will say, geez, I know that there are some kids who are still applying to schools <coughs> come December because maybe they play basketball, or maybe they play hockey. And they're right in the middle of their season's play in college. Uh, that's when they're out watching them. As long as we have everything ready, if you're going to add one more at that point, it's easy to do, right? You get the call, you get the nod from a college coach, and they say, we'd like you to apply. You are set to go, and there's no anxiety over that. You can release your scores. We just hit the button, submit, and everything's ready. There's one other piece that I'd like to talk about in the timeline, and that is the student with the arts. So we have AP Studio Art on campus, but often it's the seniors taking that class, not the juniors. And that's too late to be thinking that you're going to complete your portfolio. The portfolio really has to be finished by the end of the summer. You have to have it all digitized, ready to go. Each college has their own requirements about what kinds of uh, images that they're looking for, what kind of media. So you need to have that work completed by the end of the summer. So you have to know which colleges, right? You have to know which colleges you're applying to by the close of the spring so you can get that work done. So you've, you've been in, kind of pulled from the work that you already have put together at Tilton School and what is it that you need to do in order to complete that portfolio. So those are kind of two key areas, special presentations, special information that has to be gathered. Do you have any questions about the timeline, um, being ready in November? Any of that? <coughs> Policies? Anything that you see on your transcripts? We got it all right? We recorded all the courses? Okay. This is usually where we have tons of questions. <laughs> Yes. I do have a question about the portfolios. Yes. Do they get any help with that, or are they just expected to, you know, choose their own for, you know, I think this is my best. And so I mean, what we do is build. I don't know how to build a portfolio. Right. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. So the colleges do tell you how to build a <coughs> portfolio as long as you have the school list, and there are portfolio fairs that you can go to and actually bring some of your pieces to. Um, be reviewed by the college representatives, and they'll give you feedback and say, I'd include these pieces, maybe you want to work on something here, um, and, and you get great feedback. So we actually will help the students identify which portfolio fairs they can attend. And then, of course, our own art faculty, uh, Mr. O'Neill, uh, Eric O'Neill, um, is really helpful um, in giving feedback. And it depends on the media that's the focus of the student and what kind of portfolio. So are they doing film? They might work with Mr. Harrington on that. Um, are they putting together something that's graphic than Ms. Stevens? Um, or are they doing the fine arts? And then we'll have Mr. O'Neill working towards that. And he is actually the teacher for the AP Studio Art. So he's usually pretty familiar with that work. And then many of those students will also do an afternoon activity that's art related to get some of this work done. Um, because it is this major. So there's lots of guidance. There's professional guidance um, through our own teaching staff and professional guidance from the college staff. Yes? Uh, I'm going to be an AP art student next year, but that, that means I cannot like, get done on the quality of my end of the summer. Right, so yes, you can work on your own. And we can put together the timeline and we can put that together <coughs> in the work that we've already done in other classes other than AP Studio Art. 